Now, I've asked you the question before, and I'm going to answer you this now. Why is it that certain cancers are more frequent than others, For example, in, in particular the reproductive organ cancers? The answer to that is there are certain cells, certain organs in our body that use this mechanism of collagen chopping already under normal circumstances. Here is one example. During the female cycle, in the middle of the cycle, estrogen is rising. And under this hormonal peak, these Pac-Men are stimulated right here. This is the ovary with the egg cells. This is the ovary duct, and this is the uterus. So every, once every month, one egg leaves the ovaries, drops into the ovary duct, and migrates down to the uterus. This is magnified here. This magnifying glass is repeated here. So we look at this mature egg, and under the estrogen impact, this egg leaves the ovary and drops into the ovary duct. And this is precisely what happens around this egg right here. Collagen digesting enzymes are being produced that for a very short period of time digest the wall of the ovary. Just enough for this egg to drop out or to migrate out, I should say. Then estrogen level drops the stimulus is gone, the tissue heals immediately, and after four weeks it repeats itself. So the key word here is timing. These cells can switch on and switch off the production of these collagen molecules, collagen digesting molecules. But what happens if they can no longer do that? If the software of these cells is corrupt, if they produce these choppers forever, unlimited, what happens? Well, it continues to degrade the connective tissue. And that's the precondition for cancer. So now we understand why it's the ovaries and the uterus in the female body that are particularly frequent um, um, affected by, by cancer. What about breast? Think about pregnancy, birth. What happens then? Lactation, breastfeeding. For breastfeeding, or after the birth of the child, the entire breast of the, of the woman has to be restructured. Milk has to be produced. Milk channels have to be built. They're not there normally. So it's a huge reprogramming of, of these organs under certain normal conditions. So the cells that can repro sorry, the, uh, the restructuring of organs in our body involves collagen degradation. Because before you can build something new, you have to tear down the old structure, right? Of course. And tearing down the old structure, the demolition team in essence, that's collagen digesting enzymes. And because these cells can produce these collagen digesting enzymes under normal conditions, if they are going awry, it means that they do that uncontrolled forever. And then we can suddenly explain why breast cancer is the most frequent form of cancer in women. Prostate in men, the same testicle cancer, the same. Let's move to leukemia. You have an infection, a lung infection. What happens? The body signals, send me white blood cells. I need to fight this infection. Very well. The bloodstream is swamping the white blood cells to the lung. But the infection is not in the bloodstream. It's outside in the tissue. So how do the white blood cells leave the bloodstream and migrate to the tissue? How does it happen? We've seen it already when we talked about metastasis. 
collagen digestion. Now, if these white blood cells go awry, if the software is corrupt, they can no longer stop this mechanism, and forever they have this ability to chew up essentially wherever they go. And suddenly we can explain leukemia. Because that's exactly what happens in leukemia. White blood cell, cells migrate into every organ. There are uh, spleen infarctions from white blood cells because they just chop I its way into these organs. Bone cancer. Now you have a child. The growth, the height ultimately of a, of a person is determined by, by the bone growth. Now how does bone grow? There are certain areas, in the, especially in the long bones of the leg and the arms, that where the growth is added. So the centerpiece is relatively stable, but at the end there's, there are certain ring structures that, that contain the cells that constantly add length to this bone. These cells, too, are involved in body restructuring. These cells, too, are susceptible that this mechanism can no longer be switched off. And suddenly we understand why we have osteosarcoma cancer in kids. Like Dominic, that was his problem. Did, did you follow what I was talking about? So you see, in 20 minutes, we have been tearing down a curtain of ignorance that was built in front of you for as long as you live. These things are no magic. Everyone who thinks about it, essentially every medical person, should come and ask these questions, should come to solve it. But it is not wanted that you ask those questions. So this all started in 1992. This left on the left-hand side, you see my handwriting for the first time, the possibility cancer could be largely unknown in future generations. Believe me, it was not easy for me to write this. I went to Linus Pauling and I said, Linus, read through this. And he came back from his ranch and said, you've got to publish it. So I did. But believe me, I thought about many other diseases first that could be controlled one day. Cancer was just a death verdict, not only in my mind, but my very soul accepted that fact. Then... I went to the large pharmaceutical companies, to Roche, to Shearing, because I said, you've got to look at this, you've got to start this research, because so many lives are dependent on that. They said, this is great stuff, Dr. Rath. And we all like Linus Pauling. But we're not going to help you. Because we would compete with our own line of products. So that's when I woke up. That's when I realized that I've been naive. And that's when I understood what's wrong. And that's when we decided, well, how should that ever change if no one starts independent research? On the entire planet there was no independent research because otherwise this would have been done long by other people who are much, much more intelligent than, than I am. And then we decided that we should produce the vitamin formulas. We should sell it. We should take the profit that is left over to finance this research. Until this day, that's what we do.